let's say, for example, onboarding videos, um, you know, kind of when people get and sign up for your business, what then? Take them through that process. Walk with them. They want to be like they 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 bought. They took a long time to. Um, they took a lot of emotion and a lot of faith to buy into your product. So now how do they use that product? Walk with them. They want you to hold their hand and, and give you that great experience to where they're going to eventually be on their own, but it's that initial experience and in, in, in creating high quality video content is going to help them and ease them that experience when they first get introduced into your product. Hey there, everybody. Dobbin Buck coming back to you for another installment of The Cabin Signal, coming to you today from the actual cabin headquarters of Get You Wired in the backwoods of North Georgia. Get You Wired, full service web marketing agency, 40 plus members strong, located in the beautiful backwoods of North Georgia near the Appalachian Trail and waterfalls and huge trout and all sorts of incredible things. Today, I am super duper duper excited to have my guest, Thomas Duran, creative director of TD Films. Definitely the guy that I consider to be an authority when it comes to do with anything video. Um, many of you that are our clients or people that are reaching out to get you wired, I am here to say that we do not do video production, that we are not video production specialists, we are not video editing specialists, anything. Generally, when we're called upon for that, we're telling people to work with someone locally or to reach out to a authority like Thomas. And I know we have a lot of questions today that are gonna be really interesting to you because you're probably doing a, a lot of video conferencing, you're probably creating a lot of content yourself, and he's gonna be able to give you some insights to what you can do yourself and when it's time to bring in a professional. So Thomas, welcome, so stoked to have you today, my friend, uh, it's just incredible. Hey, thank you so much, man. I'm so excited to be here. And, uh, and it's just, it's, I've always like, uh, I've always, yeah, I'm always impressed with, with, uh, what you got built over there, brother. And, and, uh, so this is nothing but a privilege for me. And so I appreciate it. Yeah, well, absolutely. Honor's all mine. Thomas and I actually originally met in a mastermind together. So we were sharing insights on our journeys and our companies and helping each other. And we developed a friendship years ago. And uh, since then, you know, we've just, you know, we uh, follow each other, stay in touch. And uh, he's regularly absolutely. on, before the end of this, we'll tell him how to follow you on Instagram yeah. and, and all the all the platforms, but he's putting out a lot of great content, a lot of useful stuff. He has great interviews with, with incredible people that can certainly help each and every one of you small business owners. So Thomas, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you got going on right now at, at TD Films? And I know that you're constantly in evolution, moving with the times. The right, of right. Small business. So you got exciting stuff going on right now. What's happening? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you, you're exactly right. You know, when I, I've been in video production for uh, 14 years um, before I actually started my own company, TD Films, about uh, going on my fifth year now. Um, yeah. And I mean, it's definitely been a journey. It's definitely been a process, but it's just, it's pretty crazy, the maturation of that process that's happening. So what I do specifically right now for TD Films and the majority of my my focus and my and my my expertise in and my 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 work that I love to do is that I work with businesses on creating their video marketing content. Um, so I would come up with video marketing strategies that go in and align up with what their marketing strategies would be and, and hopefully improve it and and make it more successful by 10x, you know. And so obviously especially now you know, the power of video, people are really have not only has it been, I think everyone's kind of dove into the power of video, but now it's actually how to like make it effective, how to make it, um, you know, worth your investment, get the most return on the investment, um, and then making it the best so you can stand out, you know, among all the thousands and millions of other videos that are out there and the messages that are out there it could get definitely daunting. And so, understanding how to story tell, understanding how to create the right videos for the right messages for the right time. That's what we do. And so 
obviously we, uh, you know, my background has always been on film, our filmmaking uh, projects, a lot of broadcasting work. Um, and it just kind of took the evolution into creating documentaries and learning that storytelling process and then putting it over into, you know, actually working with businesses. And so that's why I keep still the films, you know, in there, but it's geared towards creating that same type of storytelling and putting it into business so they can be successful. Yeah, you know, and there's a lot, I get asked a lot, you know, like, hey, you know, who should I go to and all of that sort of thing. And, and you're always on top of mind, you know, there, there's a bunch of people out there that think because they, um, they own a, an iPhone yeah. 11, <laughs> that, they, that they have a video production facility, you know, um, right, right. You know. I love when people call it. There, there's a, it's so funny. I grew up like I, I, I learned in an actual studio, you know, like, full on grid light. I mean, just an actual <laughs> studio where you have to build out sets and, and then, you know, you see the, the, uh, every YouTuber and everybody that's like, you know, coming on and doing live videos. They're like, I'm in the studio. And it's like in their <laughs> closet, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny. It's like, we have different, uh, expectations on what we actually call studios, but I love it. I mean, I love seeing how people are really getting involved. Um, really putting the effort, I mean, through so many different sources, either them doing their own videos, hiring on a person within their companies, um, you know, hiring out. So, I mean, there's, there's just, there's a lot of different avenues uh, to go and, and, and being able to help work. You know, I'm not a volume type person or company. I like working with um, being very specific of who I work with and building that relationship so that we're constantly doing videos for the same companies, you know, so it's not like we just want to turn and burn. We love to be able to help build that story. And, 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 and a lot of people think they just need that one video and that's not the case. So like you're not going to be successful with just shooting one video. So why are you right. going to put all your eggs in one basket? And it's, it's about actually strategizing and creating a, uh, a series of things and, and continue with that content. Yeah. You know, and I, and I, I mean, video is the past, the present and the future. You know, people are like video is right. the future. No video is the past. It's the present and it's the future. It's all three, you know, it's been happening. Yep. It's been, it's been necessary and serious and, and it's becoming more so, you know, and the attention span of people, when we're talking about marketing, we're talking about content and everything. I, you know, it, and, and I could see it statistically, uh, how people are flowing through, let's just say landing pages or websites, you know, yeah. um, we can tell where they're going, how long they're staying. Of course, we can measure all that stuff and we do. And ultimately, less and less people are willing to sit and read, you know, um, yeah. Well, mean, yeah, they're scanning, they're absorbing things in a certain way. And truly, the only way that I'm aware of right now are the most effective way and the most cost effective way of maintaining their attention for a reasonable amount of time is through video. You know, if the same amount of information that you can convey in a, let's just say a two minute video. Okay. Yeah. What you can convey in a two minute video, there's no way in hell they're going to read that you know, when they, when they land on a property, you're able to get way more out. You're way able to, to right. express your individuality, your emotion, you know, your authenticity through video way more than you can through the printed word. So I'm seeing this more of the time I'm recommending it and I'm doing it all the time for my own marketing. What are your thoughts on that? Like, I know you're going to reconfirm that, right. but you probably can go yeah. a little deeper, you know? Well, I mean, if you think about it, right, there's always that, uh, what's that saying that uh, one picture is worth a thousand words or something like that? Well, one frame of video is 24, is 20, you know, <laughs> 24, <laughs> 24 frames per second of, of that. So, you know, multiply that, you're talking a huge impact, you know, it, it there's a psychologicalness to it. The more times that people see you in front of camera, the more that videos that you do, it actually builds an emotional connection with people. They get to actually know who you are, what your company is about. It's not just about reading. There is an actual emotional tie. Like for example, there's times where like I'll watch this YouTube channel uh, uh, all the time and I feel like I know these guys, right? They're, they're, they're called the Hodge twins. They're freaking hilarious. These, these, Oh these yeah, comedians. of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> right. Like I love them. I love them. And, 
Um, I was in DC in January and, um, I mean, I buy a lot of their stuff because I like their brand, right? I like what they, like who they are. But, uh, um, I was in DC and, and, and I ran into these guys at this one time and I'm coming up to them. Like they, like I know them and, 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 you know, they don't know who I am. I'm like, dude, guys, like, I just want to say, hi, I just want to introduce myself. Like I was, I don't get starstruck. Like I've been around NBA, or like sports athletes. I've done, I've done some high end, high clientele and I never, I never ever like get starstruck, but for whatever reason, these things that I watch constantly videos on or watch their, their, their messages, I, 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 I get that little bit of that starstruck. So there's like, you know, there's like a, a connection. There's a, there's this trust you build when you constantly put videos on and your customers, your perspective, your prospective clients see that. And that's what you're building because video doing your videos is a long-term strategy, right? Like you have to continue to do it. And there's going to be a mixture of doing the professionals videos and then also doing a mixture of your own. And so, um, and we can definitely go on a little bit more detail about like what would be a professional video and what would be some videos that you could do on your own. And then, um, you know, I'd love to talk about like, you know, how important it is, especially in today's, I, I think you're talking about the evolution of things, how much things have pivoted in towards obviously live streaming, these Zoom, you know, Zoom conferences, like people are 1000% in it. So it's now like, how do we get, how do we maximize that and make the best experience that we can do for, for everybody watching these videos? Yeah, yeah, that's far out, you know, and, and, and I see video all over the place. And, and so I'm going to ask you a question um, about professional quality video, production, editing, everything right. versus, versus homegrown. And so I've seen a lot of video that people have shot that I can tell, like, <laughs> oh, you know, they, man, they must have spent, you know, 30 grand on that or, 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 you know, some random number comes to my mind and then, and that just completely sucks. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Like it's overproduced. It's not, yes. conveying, it's just annoying the shit out of me and I want to turn it off. And then I, then I see some things that, that have been done thoughtful, you know, perhaps on someone's iPhone that they're able to convey their emotion, they get their message across, and I'm like, oh wow, that had a lot of meaning to me. Now, I'm not saying that that hiring a professional is not the right thing to do, I think it's a crucial right. thing to do, but I think what we're talking about is a feel, the vision behind the person like yourself that's guiding people, what you're doing, how you're doing the edits and all of that, what's sort of the, the field in there, and what's your, what's your thought on when is it the right time to bring in a professional. And I know it isn't all about the, just the quality of the video and the audio and the lighting right. and all of that. It has to do with a lot of direction and guidance, especially when it's in line with marketing. Can you unpack that a little bit? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And then obviously there's a lot to it. So um, when to invest in the video, what is, is typically um, video content that you are gonna be evergreen on um, video content that's going to be there for a long time. Um, it's going to be the, the, any videos that are going to be in f like upfront, like we're the first experience. I, I always kind of go back to experience. You can have all the systems in the world. You can have, um, you know, you can have the best, uh, sales funnels ever, but and you can have the best like way of selling people and getting them in. But the, the whole thing is, is that the reason why, we, why all those are in place is because you're trying to provide the best experience for that customer or for that client or that member, or, you know, whoever you're working with. It's about the experience. So if you want their first experience to see you on a cheap, or, sorry, I mean, I don't mean it by cheap, but like on a homemade video, what does that say for your brand? What does right. that say for the type of quality work you're going to be doing? So videos that you invest into are typically the ones that are going to be the first experience that they have with you, right? Um, videos in, and, and also not only that, but videos that are, that you can create that um, let's say, for example, onboarding videos, um, you know, kind of when people get and sign up for your business, what then? 
take them through that process, walk with them. They want to be like, they, they, they bought, they took a long time to, um, they took a lot of emotion and a lot of faith to buy into your product. So now how do they use that product? Walk with them. They want you to hold their hand and, and give you that great experience to where they're going to eventually be on their own, but it's that initial experience and in, in, in creating high quality video content is going to help them and ease them that experience when they first get introduced into your product. So those are the type of things that you want. So client, uh, for like, like client, uh, uh, I don't call them testimonials more. They're called case studies. Those are professional videos you want to invest into an about us video you want to uh, invest into about us is the video that's going to live on your about us page and you can use it for other sources as well but that's what's going to live on your about us page the about us page is the second most highly visited page um on your website and so where is once people read about us where's the typically that happens the next they're about to subscribe or purchase or set a consultation that's their next step so it acts as a lead sales agent so these are videos that you want to do professionally videos that you do on your own these are the things that are your daily content this is your 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 live streams this is your instagram posts instagram stories um your Facebook lives, your, your, even YouTube daily videos, you can make them look good, but you can also do it just yourself and your in-house. It's not necessarily produced, but those are, those are just the face to face interaction with a mem with a someone. And, and, and through there, that's where it gets really built up. So like they, they see that you, you have an amazing quality brand. They love the experience and now they feel like they are getting to know who you are and build that trust. And so, those are the type of videos you would do on your own. It's like you're even ad video. You could do ad videos on your own. You see that quite a bit where they're not really great videos, but they, they get the message across and people end up, you know, buying from it on Facebook ads. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things that uh, it's, it's understanding that it's a, it's a journey, it's a process. So you want to take your, you know, remember what, have that great experience process, but then also feel that intimate process to it. And, and the biggest thing why you see probably what, what the issue is, is that when you see highly produced videos that you do not like, or that doesn't engage you, number right. one, they're missing the whole point. They're, the, the, the content is not there. They focused way too much on the art or the production value and not actually engaging clients in it almost looks too even i i don't want to say too highly produced but it's just it's like like lifestyle videos i just don't get them you know you see a lot of these like speaker reels that are just like them walking the street getting in lambos like i can't relate to that i don't want i don't care about that um, it's like it's contrived you know it has that contrived yeah. feeling to to things and i and i'm generalizing here but you know yeah. So, but, but I see like if, if you've got your, your, your product videos, your onboarding, your training videos, your membership site videos, especially things that people are paying to get inside of, like if people are paying transactionally to get through a gateway to get material from you and you haven't honored them with actually doing things right and it looks a little bit homegrown, then it's sort of like, oh, wow, you know, uh, you know, I gave this person my hard earned money mm -hmm. and, and, exactly. And look at the level of effort that they put into this. Now the content may be there, but I, I'm looking for the full rich experience. The, you know, like we'll use the membership site as an example. Hey, they did a great job. Someone did a great web design on that. The navigation is great. The automation is great on how it tells me where to go. You know, all of that stuff is good. And then I get to the actual content where they're showing videos and you know, someone was like, hey, and, it's like uh, a loom. Uh, yeah. 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 You know, I mean, it's like, <laughs> it's like they just did a screenshot and it's just, you're just like, what is going on? Like uh, th there's a definitely a disconnect. Yeah. 1000%. I, I, it, and it drives me insane too. It's like, wow, they, they, they it, a company with brand would spend so much time and investment into, you know, the trying to get them in. But then as soon as they get them in, it's kind of like, Oh, we got you now. Here's this, you know, really not, it doesn't feel good. You know, it just, just doesn't. Um, and, it, and it turns off people. So video by doing great video like that and, and a little bit more produced video, it, it creates retention period. Um, you know, that's a, that's another thing of the power of video. 
Well, the other thing that I know about Thomas, ladies and gentlemen, is that if, you know, if he's working with something and something isn't lining up and it isn't working right, he'll call this, he'll call it out. Like this, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like uh, this isn't happening, you know, th this way we need to, you know, we need to switch gears. And I think a lot of people, they just push through that. Let me ask you a question th th this applies to that. So you were, you've worked with, you know, many, 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 many professionals, gurus, influencers, small business owners, everything. Yeah. Some people, some people naturally take to video, you know, and yes. so there's point, you know, the point person for a certain company, they're the person that needs to get up in front. Some people have it, some people don't. Tell me a little bit about what you do if you don't have it. Like your natural <laughs> thing is like, and, and, and what do you think about like teleprompters? Like do you, are you more of a teleprompter or a natural guy? I like natural, I like jamming, you know, but, but yes, you know, how does that work for the person that just is like, oh, I'm nervous. Right. No. I, and first of all, I would say like 90% of people are nervous. So um, number one, do you have to know that you're not the only one? Like there's actually, it, that's why actors and actresses, people in front of camera, their personalities. If you notice those type of people, they, they are very eccentric um, just in their regular lives and, and, and are very typically, you know, very, uh, they, they don't know how to turn that off. So, um, so it's, 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 an, it's more normal for it to be uncomfortable in front of a camera. It is scary because I'm looking in front of a camera right now, right? And it just stares at you. There is no feedback. There is no reactions, right? I see, a, I hear a lot of um, public speakers. They're like, I could talk like to 3 million people and be just fine. But the moment I get on camera, I can't, I can't do it it's because they're not getting the, the the they're not getting that instant feedback, right? They have no idea what kind of emotional connection you're making. So there's that difficulty that lies. So a couple of things that I, I work with my clients on that are not comfortable in front of camera. Number one, I actually do not use a teleprompter if I don't have to. I mean, if there's going to be some long segments, um, I would, I try to do my best to stay away from it. Number one, it actually is a skill set to read from a teleprompter. It does, it is not an easy thing to do, to be able to sound normal and talk, but have that teleprompter going. It's not a normal thing. Um, and that's why, you know, news, new, if you watch news anchors on your local news, it's all teleprompter. They just don't talk about that up front. It's just all teleprompter, but they're very good at it. Um, Right. It's a practice, a skill set. So, and a lot of people rely on the reading the message and not actually saying the message. So it doesn't come off authentic. And so I'm with you. Um, it's, it, it's better to practice and practice and practice the day prior to you going on and doing your video shoot or spending an hour over your script and talking it out loud. It's no different than when you try to practice for a public speech. Right. So, that's number one is I would try to stay away from teleprompter as best I can. Although I do use a teleprompter, it's on very, very few rare, rare occasions. Uh, number two is, is you got, you, you <laughs> how you are in life is, is doesn't come off like how you are normally. If you think you're laughing, if you think you're smiling and you feel like you're being animated nine out of 10 times, you're not being animated enough. It actually comes out to be very dull. So it's really hard for people, especially that are um, typically reserved or, or monotone, it's typically really hard to, to get them to be more animated. And so what I always explain is that you are gonna feel weird. You, it's a weird thing initially talking to in front of camera but get past that. Like, just know that that's the natural feeling. And then the more animated and more kind of weird you feel, that's actually a spot you want to be in. It's easier to dial down your tone. It's easier to dial down your facial language and your, you know, your movements than it is to bring it up. So start as high as you possibly can get to that awkwardness. You right? yeah. just call it for what it is, get to that awkward moment. And then just know that, typically right at that awkward moment that you feel it actually looks super good on camera. It's coming off authentic and you're doing a great job and then play it back. Like there's so many times where we'll do a recording 
and I'll play it back for the, um, for the client and they can watch it. They can hear themselves. They can, and then actually they start realizing, you know what? I don't, I look, I look good on camera because I have the right lighting and you know, I got a little makeup on like, like I sound good. My voice isn't as bad as I thought it was. Right. Like we all hate our own voices. We all hate how we look. There's always blemishes. There's always things that we are so critical of ourselves on. And that's why a lot of people don't go in, in front of the camera or video because they're scared of that. But I don't, it's one of those things that like, look, whatever you see, none of us see, <laughs> like none of us see or hear like you be strong on your message, be confident in your message and understand that when you talk, be, you're going to be yourself and you're going to come off and people will be drawn to that. And so it, it just takes practice and practice and know that when you're in that uncomfortable spot, you're probably right at where you need to be when it comes to presenting yourself in front of camera. I hope that helps. Yeah, well, I've given up on being concerned with my looks. You know, I got this backwards <laughs> hillbilly thing going on. What are you talking about? <laughs> People are trying to mimic your look now, darling. Like, you should have seen me the other day. I, I, uh, I just I actually just shaved, but I had, I, I was, I was getting there. Like, I, I, uh, I, I was. Uh, I wonder if I can. Here, let me see if I can. I was getting there. It was, it was looking good. I, uh, and I felt like I was part of like. Uh, I was actually out doing a defensive, uh, uh, a defensive um, handgun class, and it was with these like former like like special ops guys, and they they have their beard, and they and I had my beard with them with me, and I was like, yeah, I look the part, yes, you know, but uh, but people are trying to look like that, man. You got to keep that look strong, so don't let don't give that up. Yeah, and when you're talking about going getting weird and feeling weird and being on that edge, I feel like I operate right at that edge all the time, you know, like I'm sort of, you know, I got that crazy thing going on. You know? well, people are going to buy into that. That's the thing. It's like, it's not just the content that people are listening to. This is also the other part of the power of the video. They're, the, the, they're, they're listening to the content. They're seeing your reactions. They're see, or they're seeing you. And, and, and so people buy off of emotion. Um, it, it, it's scientifically when, when, when people are moved by that, it, it literally releases the neurons in the brains that they, they like, I want to purchase, I want to buy that. And so video does that. It, it initiates those, those, uh, chemicals in your head that, that makes people move and do an action. You know, when you read and you read text, especially on a website, there isn't much action. It's just more information kind of filling in, but it doesn't make them move and, and take an action. And that's what video is there for. So putting video as your primary, your text or your writing as secondary, your copy as secondary, you're going to find yourself 10 xing your, your business just like that. Wow. Fascinating. You know, and we're, I mean, we're touching video all day long, every day here at Get You Wired. As I mentioned to y'all before, we don't shoot video for anybody, but you know, other than like, I do this for myself um, on my laptop, you know, or something. And that's but, perfect. Like, yeah. And that's huge. I mean, that's great content and that's it's stuff that I don't, and if you can ever like when you do your own videos, if there's anything you could do to make the experience better, you can go, I would invest into that, right? You don't have to have a massive setup. You could do some really nice stuff on your phone. If you have an iPhone, I use an app called Moment. Um, and it Moment. allows you to get mm -hmm, on the iPhone. I don't know. There's other video, uh, video apps that you could do for Androids, but on iPhone, uh, there's a, there's an app called Moment and you can really dial into the settings to make that video almost like a film look to it um, and, and you just get the right color, the right quality. Um, and you can invest into a light uh, on Amazon for real cheap and having a nice microphone. Let's talk about the light. So do yeah. I need a light or do I need like a LOW three point lighting system or something? Three point line. If you're doing a professional video, that's where the three point lighting system is. But if you're just doing your own videos, one light is more than sufficient, but it's about how to place that light. I see a lot of people doing, um, I'm going to go against contrary what a lot of people do. A lot of people do those ring lights, right? Yeah. Like, oh, look at this cool ring light. And in the middle of the ring light, I could put my iPhone on. 
And so then I could just look at directly into the iPhone. And I had this light blaring on me. I hate that because number one, not you look at any professional video, there is not a light ever, ever pointed directly into your face. There's right. just, it, it, there is nothing that's, it's harsh. It blows your face out. It doesn't shape your face at all. It doesn't like there lighting helps. The whole point of lighting is to not obviously, obviously see better quality, but it gives you a better texture and a, and a better shape around, around your face. You know, there's, there's a lot of different, um, th th lighting theories, uh, the Ram brand, you know, uh, type lighting thing where you have like a light on the sign, it kind of creates a triangle. Um, so you have it sort of shape your face. You don't want to shoot it up. You don't want to shoot too high. Um, but you could do a lot with one light. So what I would try to say is when you're getting a lighting kit, you could buy one on Amazon for real cheap. Don't buy a ring light, but just buy any LED light. I mean, even these little things like, like this, this, whoops, let's see. Whoa. Oh, there wow. Like this. Um, what brand is that? Better. Genre? Ge Genre. Genre. So G E N. A R A Y. So G E N A R A Y. That, that, thing, that looks expensive to me. Is that an expensive light? No, not at all. You could buy a bunch of these lights for like, I mean, there's, 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 you could buy packages like two lights of like this for like 60, 70 bucks, 80 bucks. Oh, that's, yeah, that's so, in my budget for sure. Yeah. Generate. So, yeah, generating uh, is, is a brand. And, and so there's different brands that sell these type of LED lights. Um, the biggest thing is 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 try to get as much soft uh like these type of things like filters and and just soften up the light um you know right now i have a light right here i just have one light on me and it's a key light and i i put a soft box around it but the biggest thing with lighting is that you only need one you don't want to be directly only on your face kind of turn it to the side it helps the shape of your face and get yourself as much you can, you don't need a soft box to soften up the light. You can use a bed sheet. You can use, um, wax paper. You can use uh, a shower curtain, anything that kind of gives you where the light will, will just spread out and also stop down. So it's not as harsh. It's not as bright. So it's not necessarily the volume of the bright. Yeah, I could turn up the, the, or the volume, but you know, the, the exposure of the light, I could turn that all the way up. But if I put like soft, like lighting in front of it, that's what's going to give you that really nice soft look to it. So that's the biggest things of the light to, to, to look for. That's cool. You could probably put a COVID mask over the light and it would work. Yeah. Really <laughs> yeah. Di yeah. Diffusion, yeah. you know? Yeah. Just um, as much diffusion as you want. So, I mean, it just depends on what kind of look you want, but I highly suggest to do uh, one light. Don't stay away from the ring lights. Look for something like this, put it on a stand. And then you could put, you could drape a shower curtain. You could, you know, use, use those type of things to, for diffusion and you're good to go. Hey, what about people like me with glasses? So it's like, you're always seeing like, what's stay away from the ring here. light. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stay. <laughs> Cause that's another thing. There's the reflection, right? So yeah. the reason why I keep it to the side, like, trust me, it's a, it's a, it's an ongoing issue no matter who you are whatever le level you're at when you have glasses having lights is is always a uh is always a task to try to get it maneuvered enough to where um you know you're trying to avoid the the uh the glasses sometimes tilting the glasses just slightly you know on on a person where it doesn't look like it's all the way but it it, it will release the reflection uh, moving the light to the side, trying to get it up high above the face, it'll it'll remove the reflection. Um, so you just have to kind of test those things out um, to make sure that you know there's no no reflecting. But I get that too because I shoot in front of windows or whatever, and right. like you can see the light, the reflection, the one. It's like oh, you know, you just have to. That those are just the the fun parts of when you're setting up for your production. It takes time, you know. That's why a wow. lot of people will will spend a full day, they will spend a full day just staging a studio um, before the day before production. So that way, when you go in production, you're not wasting that time. You're just shooting in the very next day. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, I always worry about this reflection and stuff, you know, and, and also if you all look closely in my reflection, 
<laughs> my production crew. So it doesn't seem like I've got a big production going on here, but you know, this is like a Hollywood stage here made to look it's like awesome. a cabin in the backwoods of North Georgia. And my crew is all right over here. But the thing that is in my contract is that my crew members to keep me lively and feeling funny is they all have to be naked. So I don't want you all to see in my reflection. If you look closely, you could probably see a couple of these people. Hey, so I'm good because I have no pants on. Since I have no pants on, I'm, I'm like part of the crew. No, I'm just kidding. That's why I like working with Thomas. He has yeah. no problem with being part of the nude production crew, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's that's really cool. So we talked about, and, and dude, I'm, I'm buying... I'm buying a light uh, when I when I get off this. Uh, yeah, and and interview and, and you. so you you can always and, and another thing too is that like what's kind of nice with what you have going on, you really actually have a nice natural light that's happening. Anytime you have a an opportunity to use natural light, that's awesome. That's 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 what this whole thing is is to mimic natural light. And so um, you know the way you have so I see you have a window you know right there on that side and. Yeah. And you know what? Like, even if you put up a shower curtain over there, just hang up a shower curtain on that, that's going to stop it down. And you're going to have like a really nice, you'll, you'll have a really <laughs> nice fixture of your, of your. Oh, that's a your, great idea. No. That's um, why you know? I deal with the pros. Yeah. Yeah. So you may not need to have to buy a light. If you're going to do all <laughs> these things at this time of the day, I, uh, you know, it's, it's use the natural light. It's, 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 it's that's what, photographers do and you see, you'll see that uh you know a lot of my videos i do especially when i used to do like wedding videos well oh, back in the day oh my god those are the those are the days um uh, mm -hmm. but uh like you know I, I always put i always put a uh the groom or the bride in front of a window so that way i can have that natural light and so um just you know put up a shower curtain in front of that window and i think you'll uh you'll be amazed in how much difference that makes you know on your, yeah what you have going on right now that's great. Hey, what about this microphone? You, you know, I was, I was just thinking to myself, you know, I, I sort of sound, you know, I don't sound bad, but I'm using sure. these AirPod Pros, but like, yeah. you're coming, you're coming through like your, your Orson Welles or something, you know, like. Yeah. Audio is huge. Like, like, I'll be honest with you. If you have, if you're looking to see what you want to invest in first, um, I would, and this is kind of sort of, going against the grain of what I, what I do, right. In a way, but, um, the number one thing I would do is I would invest into good audio. Uh, that's the, I would, if you are very, very limited and you can only purchase something very small, I would do that all in audio, the better audio you you, you could do so much content work with just great audio. You could be somewhat okay video, but there's a lot of things you could do with that somewhat okay video to make it look amazing on post-production. Right. But it's your video is not going to be any good if you don't have great audio. So the number one thing I would invest into is definitely great audio. Now there's different resources you can use for audio. What I have right now, what you see, so it's a, it's a condenser mic. Um, it, I mean, any condenser mic, you, you know, like, your podcast condenser mics you see joe rogan using it all the time or you know this those popular those popular mics um but you, those are those are those give it really pricey but you can get some really nice ones for pretty cheap but you know i would spend probably 200 bucks on the on a really good mic um that i so, think you, you would be more i mean another like for example like right here road is another great company so i have this mic this is a um, I use this for all my interviews. Like when I mm -hmm. do an interview for someone, um, I'll have it above. It's their shotgun or it's a, it's a boom mic and I'll have yeah. it above. And, uh, this was like 400 bucks. Um, it yeah. might be a little bit cheaper now, but it, it's the number one thing. The number one person that I hire on, on my crew, the very first person I'll like, if I can't, if I need a, like, so typically my shoots, my, my crews are about two to three people. My very first person that I put on my crew is an audio engineer, period. I don't hire anybody else. I'll do everything else on my own, but like very first person I put on a crew is an audio engineer. That's how crucial audio is. Um, and, and it's, it always seems to be the forgotten, the forgotten 
asset to it and and it, it shouldn't be it should be your your biggest your biggest investment so i mean you can get mics like this and hang it up right over here hook it to the computer there's there is a i don't know if i can let's see if this will reach there is a little box this is what's connecting me through the computer so mm -hmm. this is called a uh, Scarlett Focus Right box. What it does is that allows you to put in uh, an XLR cable, mm -hmm. and and then it connects to your computer, and so that way I could get this mic to go through Zoom or whatever platform that you use on, and uh, and adjust the levels. This that that Focus Right was like two hundred bucks or one hundred fifty bucks, one hundred twenty, one hundred fifty bucks. This yeah. this condenser mic was about. 200 bucks, maybe at that, maybe a little bit less, probably a little bit less. I can't remember exactly. It's been a while, but I would say I probably put 300, 350 bucks into uh, audio. And I would put all that money into it before I would actually do video. Cause you can always just use this for your video. Right. Right. What, what brand is that microphone, your condenser? It's uh, it's, <laughs> It's funny. Uh, it, it's not a really well-known brand. CAO. Mm. I don't, I honestly, it's so I'll be a, so backstory behind getting this. Um, I, I, uh, I started a, a podcast uh, two years ago called just create actually, yep. you, know, you can see it right there. And, uh, and I'm going to continue it with a live series. I actually just bought a whole live stream set up uh, that I'm picking up today or after the show, but uh, awesome. um but anyway, long story short, I, I, I know I wanted the condenser look, right? I didn't want to use a lavalier. <laughs> I didn't want to use, I wanted this as a condenser look. And so uh, I could have ordered it off of Amazon. Or I could have ordered it off of B&H, but I needed one right away because I decided to start, you know, my first guest was like coming the next day. So I went down to a music store and this is all they had. And that's what I stuck with. <laughs> great. Well, it so, sure sounds so, great. <laughs> You know, oh, and, and all and all the pricing you're throwing out sounds like very affordable for anybody. I mean, if I mean, if you're if you're if you're using this for your business and marketing, and you can't spend a few hundred bucks here or there, then I yeah, don't know, then I they, don't know what to say. But you know, you're yeah. probably spending thousands of dollars somewhere. You know, redivert some of that money and, and put it into some gear. And I'm Absolutely. looking at this too. Like I'm, I want to step up my game. And then also the other thing that's interesting is the more I sort of step up my game on my, you know, like these, you know, this is really shot in sort of a live format. Um, yeah. It makes me appreciate the expertise that like, you, you know, you bring. So it, the, the further I get down this avenue and doing more video, I'm like, man, I wish I had someone that could come in, set everything up and we could really make this thing sing, you know? And, and that's uh, and then at that point, I think if you, if you're at that point and you're at that situation where you can obviously afford that, that that's something that I would highly suggest to invest into. If you're going to make this a, a or you a, not you specifically, but like right. you as in general, you, you know, yeah. that is the perfect time to know that like, you know what I need to, it's one thing to buy the equipment, but to be able to operate the equipment. So a lot of people think that if I have the equipment, it's going to work. Well, there's a lot. I mean, I've spent a whole day trials and errors trying to make this thing work, right? So um, there's always an engineer that's involved for every company that's out there when it comes to their equipment. So, you know, know that where you want your investment to go into. So if you know that you want to up level your game, you know, put a couple of thousand dollars into the equipment and then invest into a person that either they're coming in and using their equipment and you paying them on a monthly retainer or you're hiring a person and you're just letting them run the show as your technical, essentially your technical director. Um, right. You know, and so those are options that when you're at that certain level. So like, for example, when my clients solidarity health share, um, I'm on there, I'm on a retainer basis with them. And this is the type of work that I love doing is because I get to consistently work. Like, it's like, I feel like I'm almost an extension of their employees. And so that's the, that's the fun that I get to have because I understand how to tell their story. I understand what their message is. I understand what the branding is. I understand because of all I'm in there with them. And so every single video that we do, it stays consistent. Um, and, and, and so, but they, they are able to take the time and invest into a retainer where now I am producing six to 10 pieces of content 
every single month for them, creating on highly professional, um, well-produced, just series like something like what we're doing right now. We straight, we started a talk series called straight ahead and we bring on guests and I bring my camera in. I'm shooting the person uh, or the, the, the interviewer and I'm bringing in zoom calls uh, for the guests and I'm taking it back in post-production and I'm editing it and I'm editing it, adding the, the nice lower thirds, you know, the intros, the outros um, and, and, and make, color correcting it, making the, the audio pristine. Those are the time and investments. And those are the, the little things that when you do that, it's, it just gives a person, a viewer, a much better viewing experience. And that's the, it kind of goes back to what I was saying at the very beginning. Everything we do when it comes to video, all it does is, is to enhance and give a better experience for your client. And that's how you're going to 10x your your, your your whole, your whole business. And, and it, it doesn't necessarily have to be where you have a lot of videos, but if you do the right videos, the quality videos and put it out the right time and distribute it at the right exact message, right, right people, it's going to be, it, it'll blow away any, I mean, I'll, I'll put that up against any like, you know, Billy Jean's <laughs> marketing, whatever, you know, click funnel sales out there is. I mean, not that I'm trying to move on that, but like there it's, if you're the type of person that like for me, you know, like I said, I don't work in volume. I work with, I, I, I my clients are like, I know them by the name, you know, like I, it's not like I'm, I deal with them every single day. And so, you know, that type of marketing is not necessarily in my realm, but, but the fact that I don't, the fact that because my videos speak for themselves, it gives that experience and you're just going to be able to really uh, upsell your, your work and, and demand more money. And you can buy that experience. You get more money. Like you can help raise your prices. You get to retain people. There's just so much that goes into it. Sorry. I, I love talking. Yeah. About I'm a believer. I'm a believer. And so, um, well, we're, we're, we're getting to towards the uh, end of our time together here. Um, really grateful, great information, really useful to you all. Now, um, get you our clients, people that follow us that are watching these videos and all, how can they get in touch with you now? You're all over the place. Cause I see you pop up, you know, <laughs> you pop up. I turn on my, I open up my phone and it's like, Thomas is live, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. How yeah. And there's going to be more of that. So, uh, uh, all the major platforms, uh, I do, uh, where I'm, I'm heavily involved in right now is, is, uh, Instagram, um, TD film at uh, TD films, 1904. Um, uh, my Facebook, just Thomas Duran. Um, and, uh, I'll definitely accept your friend request. Um, and then, uh, LinkedIn at, uh, TD films and, you know, Thomas Duran, D U R A N. I also have a website you could go to that, uh, um, you see a lot of my work and what we do, but, uh, TD films.com pretty simple. So that's how you can find me, communicate with me. Now, if you're searching TD films and you're on Google, now <laughs> make sure that you don't make go it, to the uh, yeah. Bollywood Indian romantic yeah. Let film me. site. <laughs> that's all right. So this is a good example. So yeah, um, look, my SEO is not great right now. Um, that is being worked on. That is actually being revamping. So if you want to go and search for me, just go to, I like, like it's tdfilms.com. I'm the only tdfilms.com there is. You'll, my website will pull up immediately. Um, but on Facebook, um, and on Instagram, at Instagram, TD, uh, TD films, 1904 at TD films, 1904, follow me there. Um, all my links are on, on Instagram. I use that quite a bit. I love it. It's a great, great creative platform. Um, and then I do a lot of live, uh, stuff on Facebook. So, um, yeah, and it's really good. And we'll put all these links in, uh, in our descriptions and stuff. So we'll make it easy. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So my, that, my, my, my SEO is, is, is left to desire right now, but uh, <laughs> that's being worked on. <laughs> I was like, cause, cause I was sort of looking before we were getting together. I'm like, I need to yeah, go yeah. over there. And I, I was, and, and I was like, man, he's really branched out, you know, um, <laughs> he's big in India. Um, <laughs> look there's a lot of people there i i <laughs> <laughs> so so that's that's wonderful um 
and uh, so great. If you if you have an upcoming video project, if you're a client of ours or you're a friend of mine or just someone that follows Get You Wired, definitely worth having the conversation with Thomas. See what he thinks about your project. Uh, I, I can't think of a better person to work with. Just like uh, real knowledgeable, real easygoing. Like I like working with people that I can gel with. You know, I do not like being, especially when it when I'm on the spot needing to be creative. I want people that don't make me uptight. You know, Thomas <laughs> will not make you uptight, you no. know. And right. and for and I don't mean to interrupt, but for for every all your viewers out there, um, what I'm what, normally what we do is like, you know, I usually work with before I start working with any client, I work with them on a whole complete strategy. Um, for you, for any of your viewers that are out there that come and want to schedule a consultation, call me to just to understand like what videos they want in place. Or like I could take a look at their website, take a look at their business. I'll strategize them with them and prioritize what videos they need. And I mean, they can obviously do work with me or if they just take that strategy, um, that blueprint and, and, and you want to use something that's local, I'd certainly understand, but I'll do it free for, for all any of your customers and your viewers. Um, feel free to schedule a call with me. Just go to those, just go to those links that, that Dobbin sends up and, and I will take you with a, an hour long, a consultation call where we will strategize every give you a blueprint because that's the biggest thing is this you want to have a blueprint you want to have that success be able to have initial success and uh, i can help you with that and uh, that way you'll have a game plan of how to do your videos because i know that's always the biggest question what videos do i start with when yeah. do i use this video when do i need this video and so i will be more than happy to consult you with uh, putting that blueprint together and uh and you guys can use it however you wanted to use it Oh man, I'm going to take you up on that one. I did. Absolutely. He, he's like, he's giving you guys stuff that he wants to charge me for. What's up with that? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's the Domin so, discount. It's the Domin discount. <laughs> so that's great. Well, thank you, Thomas. Appreciate you coming on and all you incredible people out there. Um, hope you're doing well. I, right now we're still in the COVID uh, era. So um, hope you're enjoying this content. Uh, please. Uh, at any time, if you have questions, reach out to Thomas. If, if you want to reach out through us and connect with Thomas, we're happy to connect you directly if that's easier for you. Continue watching The Cabin Signal every month. New material coming out, new interviews with incredibly cool people like Thomas and uh, trying to bring you some value and a little bit of fun along the way. So enjoy your day. Thank you for spending time with us. Thanks again, Thomas. Cheers. Thank you. Hey, cheers. Appreciate it.